you know, um, I really only came to, to know of you through, through the magazine, through in its, uh, in its hard copy form, because I'm a bit old to really pick it up on the <laughs> on, <laughs> online. <laughs> but um, this, this, this issue, the one that you've got in your hand, in fact, spent, put quite a detailed review of the pavilion and what the pavilion was all about. Um, what, what was your feeling about that, or what was your reaction to it? Where, where did that fit within the, the magazine's sort of um, thread of ideas? Of ideas. Um, so, yeah, a, um, fantastic um, writer, Nick um, Dow, actually um, penned the, the piece um, focused around pavilions. And, and just to give a little bit of background, um, you know, we were very um, honoured and um, humbled to be invited to, um, you know, create a um, our second um, print edition, you know, focused um, around pavilions and, and to be associated with the, um, you know, with the M Pavilion. Um, and that kind of, I guess the, um, you know, the whole notion of um, pavilions and, um, you know, temporary public um, interventions and, and public space architecture, um, you know, uh, are all sort of um, themes that, that you know we love to explore and um, have been um, exploring mainly online for the last um, last couple of years now and um, and newly to print um, and um, and yeah so the um, I guess the the sort of um, article that um, uh, that, that Nick, Nick, Nick penned yeah. it was really yeah. sort of a a, a, um, a brief history on um, on pavilions and um yeah but you know the, the magazine is, is is a lot more than that and you obviously took that as a starting point and headed off into a number of different areas which obviously came from the idea um, about space and about living and, and small small houses and things like that do you want to talk about that for a bit yeah, yeah absolutely I, I guess um something that we're that we're um super passionate about and and um it's sort of a um, driving philosophy, I guess, behind um, Assemble, which is um, the sort of um, the publisher of Assemble Papers, um, is really sort of looking at small footprint, um, what coined sort of small footprint living, um, and that sort of really brings together, um, you know, efficiency um, and um, care in sort of design, um, sustainability. Um, but then, um, you know, also um, lots of thought for, um, you know, how community and, um, you know, people can um, come together um, to live in, you know, compact and high density um, spaces, really. And it, it was, um, I guess, inspired um, sort of living overseas for a number of years um, myself and um, and my two um, partners in Assemble, um, Ben, Ben Keck and um, and Kino Holland, who's an, who's um, an architect himself, um, and sort of arriving back in Melbourne, I guess five or six years ago, um, we'd sort of realised that um, you know the the um, urban dream um, for us to buy a little um, terrace, you know, in the inner suburbs was was um, you know, becoming increasingly less um, accessible, and having lived in in all of these fantastic, you know, um, Amsterdam. I, I lived in Amsterdam for a couple of years, and um, Barcelona, and you know, lived in um, in Copenhagen. Those kind of places. There's really such a fantastic culture of of um, you know people living together in close proximity, in beautifully um, thought through, you know, public. And, and private spaces, um, and you know, while we, I guess, Melbourne has a um, a fantastic, um, you know, we're so lucky with all of our parks and fantastic public spaces and mm. lots of great architecture. Um, felt like there was um, potentially there, there could be um, better. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think one thing I got out of reading that was that the the debate about and the debate that's current at the moment about um, how small can a, a good apartment be, you know, is 
you know, and I think they, they try to sort of set limits of 35 square metres for a bed sitter or 50 square metres for a one bedroom and all, and there, I think there's a lot of debate about that. Absolutely. And I, I've, always, I've always thought, and I think it's reflected in this, that in fact you can have incredibly small spaces. Um, I know from when Susan was living in Tokyo, she's living in an unbelievably tiny space, but it's quite a livable space, but that in thing in turn reflects back onto things like the pavilion, which is what, if you're living in a tiny space, you need you need spaces in the community, you need to get... Beautiful public spaces. You need beautiful Absolutely. public spaces, you need spaces where things are activated, where, oh, sorry about that, where where you go and do other things because it's not about, it, the, the, the home takes on a different, a different role. Absolutely. And it's, I think it's also, um, you know, it's, it's the sort of cultural, um, you know, notion of the sort of um, Aussie dream of, you know, the, the kind of quarter acre block and, you know, having, having that house um, in the suburbs and um, that sort of, um, um, I guess, and, you know, the kind of urban sprawl that, that um, you know, naturally uh, um, evolves from that, that kind of um, um, dream, I guess. But that's a, that's a major change, isn't it, really, for in the last, few, last 10 or 15 years, particularly for Melbourne, to, to go from that, we can all live in, on a quarter acre block, we can all, all have a front yard and a backyard. Absolutely. To we can live in a 35 square metre apartment high rise or wherever or low rise in the in the Indian in the suburbs um. most definitely and and maybe um, you're kind of looking back to um, I don't know even even sort of early 2000s you know um, I think you know Rob Adams and and the city of Melbourne of, of um, you know um, uh, should be sort of lauded for you know bringing um, you know great public spaces and um, you know, a great sort of desire for people to to kind of move back into the city and, you know, um, with that sort of a bit of a cultural shift in, in that kind of thinking from, um, you know, that, that quarter acre block, um, you know, out in, out in the suburbs into, you know, kind of being amongst the thick of it and having all sorts of um, amazing, um, you know, cultural and sporting and... Yeah. I mean, you also you also have an article on Rob Adams in the in the magazine, and I think there is no doubt. I mean, I think Rob's been behind, been passionate about the urban realm. Um, I know he and I disagree on architects uh, on, on the significance of of um, the architecture that in, in, that can creates the container for the urban realm, and I think he's just he's absolutely committed to the urban realm itself. Um, but it's been very a very significant contributor and, and, and his drive for the Melbourne City Council I think is part of what makes you know, comes together with people like Naomi to make um, projects like this work. Absolutely. Yeah, he's a he's a living legend, isn't he? And Indeed. So um, what went wrong? Because um, <laughs> as as we know there's there's yes. no Pol regulation politics. on the the building of these high rise apartment buildings. And in every city that you've lived in this strong regulation and we now get these these buildings going up next to each other in ridiculous close proximity so so what went wrong where did rob adams and the rest get it wrong well i think they just i think it took them a few years to actually get a handle on what was going wrong i think it was a, it just it happened through the current regulations and in more last few years the council and various people have stepped in and and um re-looked at the whole sort of thing and suddenly created a whole set of new regulations about separation between buildings and a lot of those sorts of things. But I think, Leon, it's, it's, it's that real problem of, of ma man mandatory regulations, or I think, only bring the worst up to average and they never contribute to um, great outcomes. They don't contribute to that special, that special thing about that the, the good design brings to it. And, and, and I, I think it's how you push on from mandatory regulations to, to um, aspirational good, good outcomes. And, 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 and it's, not, it's not about how big the apartment is, it's how great the apartment is, how, what a fantastic piece of architecture it is. The quality of the architecture. Yeah, and how do we, how do we, that's the problem of how do we achieve that. And I, and I think council and people like that are stuck with, with, with regulation as their means of, of doing it. Mm. And that's not, that's not the way to make it 
abs that's not the final way to make it work really well. M maybe you could ask a little bit about the practice around Assemble. I mean, that's a very interesting collaboration that you've set up, and Assemble is only one of the products. What else are you doing? Um, with um, Assemble or...? Um, the your practice, the, the whole... The the three of you, or yep. whatever it is. Um, so, uh, <laughs> whatever um, it is. Uh, <laughs> My is notes don't do. tell me. <laughs> um, well, Assemble is, is really sort of like the, the, the meeting of the minds of, um, of three friends um, who, who, you know, different, different sort of backgrounds. My, my background is um, in um, you know, communication um, and branding um, way back in the days. and. Um, Ben's was in um, investment banking and, and, and property more recently, um, and, um, and Kino's um, a brethren of the architecture um, and movement and worked for um, uh, Jackson Clements Burroughs um, for um, 12, 12 years, I think, up into the end. Um, and I guess it was, um, yeah, it was, it was sort of born out of this um, Frustration, I guess, at, at sort of seeing a, a lack of, um, you know, and you know, I think si since um, we founded Assemble uh, four or five years ago, there's definitely been a fantastic sort of um, movement of um, better quality, um, you know, architecture which um, really um, encourages, you know, the um, all of the sort of um, philosophies of, of that sort of small footprint living, having you know um, communal rooftops and, and shared spaces, and um, you know that the kind of idea of um, collaborative consumption where you know you, you don't need um, a big back garden, and um, you know if you want to be um, centered in the city or, or close to, um, rather than having you know a two by two square meter little. Um, backyard terrace. If everyone, you know, puts them all together, you can have a nice, nice um, big rooftop terrace to to share and, um, you know, use um, once or twice a week rather than, um, you know, having a tiny little space that you that is not really very functional and and you kind of use uh, use not very often. I'd have to say there are copies of Assemble over on the counter over there, and I'd encourage everybody to to take one and read it. Please, absolutely.